Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide from a case of clear cell carcinoma in the kidney. And clear cell carcinoma is the commonest type of renal cell carcinoma. So before we look at the tumor itself, which is located here, let's take a look at the non-neoplastic kidney. This is the renal cortex, and this is the medulla. In the cortex, we can see glomeruli, and we can see some tubules, and these are parts of the proximal convoluted tubule. These are usually lined by cells with abundant dense eosinophilic or pink cytoplasm. This area looks quite different, and this is the renal medulla, which comprises collecting ducts and part of the loops of Henle, and we do not see glomerular structures here. Now moving on to the area of the tumour, we can see at low magnification that it is relatively well circumscribed. However, there is no well-defined fibrous capsule, and as we go into higher magnification, we can see that this tumour is composed of nests and larger islands of cells. And in some areas, there is a tubular kind of architecture as well. These cells are polygonal in shape. They are large and they contain abundant clear cytoplasm. At high magnification, we can actually appreciate that some of the cells appear to have an almost foamy or bubbly appearance in the cytoplasm. And these cells appear clear because they are rich in lipid and glycogen. And lipid itself often washes off during our processing into microscopic slides. Let's focus now on the nuclei of the tumor cells. And we can see that they are relatively small and uniform in size. The cells have low nuclear cytoplasmic ratios or low NC ratios. And over here, some of the cells contain quite distinct nucleoli. So noticing the nucleoli is important because this is part of the grading process of renal cell carcinoma. How clearly can we see the nucleoli at certain magnifications? Now let's learn a little bit more about renal cell carcinoma. As mentioned, clear cell carcinoma is the commonest histologic subtype of renal cell carcinoma. It is usually found with a slight male predominance in middle-aged or older adults. Most cases are sporadic. However, they do also occur in a familial context, for example, in patients with von Hippel-Lindau syndrome and other syndromes. Risk factors would include familial syndromes, a history of smoking, as well as patients with end-stage renal disease who have acquired cystic disease. And this is where the tumors may arise. So these tumors are actually very well known for being clinically silent and sometimes they can present for the first time with metastases rather than the primary tumor. And these tumors are also well known to metastasize in unusual locations such as the skin or even the thyroid gland. The more common locations for metastatic renal cell carcinoma would include the bones, the lungs, the liver, and sometimes the adrenal gland. Patients may also present with paraneoplastic syndromes, including polycythemia as well as Cushing syndrome. Grossly, these tumors tend to be relatively well circumscribed and rounded or spherical, and they have a very beautiful golden appearing cut surface. And this again correlates with the microscopic appearance we saw earlier because these cells are full of lipid, hence giving rise to this golden appearance. The tumors also have a propensity to invade into the renal vein. Here is another example where we can see this golden yellowish tumor actually crawling into the renal vein. And these tumors can grow all the way into the inferior vena cava. And the extent of propagation in these large vessels is important in staging of these tumors. This is the area of non-neoplastic kidney as well as here. And this is the perirenal fat. And this region of the renal sinus is also very important to assess in terms of staging. So this is just a very brief snapshot of how we stage our tumors. And you can learn about this more in videos in our web resource PathWeb. 
Microscopically, these tumors are composed of islands as well as nests of large polygonal cells with abundant, clear, lipid-rich cytoplasm. The cells contain lipid as well as glycogen, and there is variable nuclear enlargement and pleomorphism. Here is a very quick snapshot of how we grade these tumors, and you can see that the presence of visible nucleoli at different levels of magnification is how we assess the grade. So if you would like to learn more about how we assess the stage and the grade of these tumors, you can look at our web resource, PathWeb, and look in the Pathology in Action pages. And the link to PathWeb is in the video description. So here is the video on staging, and here is the video on grading in PathWeb. Hence, in summary, this is an example of clear cell renal cell carcinoma with a relatively well circumscribed tumor composed of nests and islands of large polygonal cells with abundant clear to bubbly cytoplasm and relatively small nuclei. These tumors tend to invade into the renal vein and the renal sinus in the hilar region and they can also invade the renal capsule and they are also well known to present with late metastases as well as metastases in unusual locations. Thank you.